like the public transportation and vending machine loving weeb I am, I've been studying Japanese for a good two to three years. And now that I've finally mastered how to ask where the bathroom, library, and my automobile are, I decided to rewatch some animes I've enjoyed in the past without subtitles for practice. And while I'm watching some of the cult classics I liked as a kid, I've started to realize I had some really bad taste, like honestly, what was I on? But jokes aside, one show that has been quite popular and has been dominating the shonen landscape has been none other than Demon Slayer. And this popularity isn't just pure luck. There are plenty of good reasons why this anime is as popular as it is today, with a movie trilogy planned out for the last arcs of the series. It has a really entertaining and easy to follow plotline, memorable characters both on the hero and villain side, and of course the Goku versus sized elephant in the room, the animation, voice acting, and soundtrack. Like seriously, I cannot get the Infinity Castle out of my head, it's so fucking catchy. For whatever factors, I personally think that the characters are what makes a show, a show. While the author drives the story to its conclusion, it's the characters that truly make it memorable. And given its shonen genre, the characters are easy to digest, have great designs, and their interactions with one another are overall entertaining. With obvious examples being the two main characters Tanjiro and the best boy in the world Inosuke. Now you may be asking yourself, Lemma, Lemoy, isn't there three, not two? Aren't you missing one more piss-colored haired character? Well, I fucking hate Zenitsu. Nope, 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 I don't care, I don't care! He's annoying, loud, annoying, a coward, annoying, and overall, how do I say this lightly? A bitch, yeah. Remember when I said I've been re-watching this show for practice? Well, every time this bitch yells or talks, this show almost becomes unbearable to me. It's so bad, I, no hyperbole, have to skip every time this motherfucker yells. I don't care how many Mizitsu fans come after me with death threats, okay? I'm saying these things because I MEAN IT! Man, I love saying it! Just give me a reason, I mention it! I mention to say it again, please! <sighs> Alright, let me chill out. Zenitsu is... disappointing. The feelings I have for him is one of a disappointed father rather than pure hatred. And as much as I want the reason to be his yelling and perviness, it's because of how much potential he had as a character. In my opinion, Zenitsu could have been one of the best, most developed and complex characters in this show. And sadly, he just didn't deliver. Throughout the series, there were so many times for this to happen, for him to grow, but he just doesn't. It sucks. And honestly, I think it's about time someone addresses this, because I really want to love his character. I really do. But where his character goes towards the end of the series, I can't lie to myself. I just miss him so much. And that sounds really yeah. horrible. Hey, so if you could write any type of death a person can endure in the death note, can I make it so someone dies being beaten to death by a goth dummy mommy? What? You can't you can't just ask a question out of nowhere like that, dude. Zenitsu is known to be exceptionally cowardly and have low confidence. While the reason is not important, since day one he has been fighting with this struggle. But what makes his character exceptionally unique is, despite his low confidence, is capable of amazing feats that rival the skills of some Hashira. However, he's only able to apply these skills when essentially unconscious, using his enhanced hearing to put himself in a sleepwalking trance, and after waking up, almost forgets the entire interaction. Despite being highly skilled, a swordsman capable of thunder breathing, Zenitsu often doubts his own self-worth and capabilities. His anxiety and self-deprecating attitude stems from a fear of failure and inadequacy. But when faced with real danger, his instincts take over and he's able to perform incredible feats of strength without conscious control. This duality highlights his own internal struggle. This self-doubt and cowardice are at odds with his true potential and bravery. And it's this, this part of his character that is absolutely amazing to me. It shows self-doubt doesn't have to define one's potential or limit one's capacity for greatness. Zenitsu has the potential to be a deeper, more philosophical character compared to the others in the show. He has the promise to encourage viewers to recognize their own internal battles. That having low confidence in yourself is a common part of the human experience. How anyone has the potential of being great. Again, you don't really get this kind of feeling or empowerment from the other main human characters in the show. While most tend to have a tragic backstory, an endearing motivation to keep pushing forward and help others in the form of slaying demons, Zenitsu doesn't feel like he has this common trait they all have. 
to me, it feels like he's fighting more for himself. This isn't to say he's a selfish character entirely, but instead has internal struggles that trump the overarching idea of helping others by slaying demons. He's doing this for himself, to prove himself or to someone that he's worthy to be where he's at now. So far, we have a character that is not only more complex than most of the characters in the show, but also one that provides a message for viewers. Zenitsu's complexity doesn't just stop there. These aspects of his character are not just present, but also transform with his battles throughout the show. Is your hot or is her name hot? Well? You know what would be a good name to moan? Utahime from Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> You're still doing it? What are you talking about? The name's attractive, the character is too, it's a win-win. Not as hot as Nanami, up top! Hey, oi! Almost every single fight he's in slowly builds part of his character. Throughout the series, there are various battles he's contributed in that slowly builds on his internal struggles. We first have Season 1, Episode 17, where we are initially introduced to his powers. And while we do see him use his powers beforehand in Episode 12, Episode 12 is used more as a means to tease his ability, something to look forward to later down the road. But it's Episode 17 where we start to look deeper, how and why he's capable of showcasing these amazing skills in the first place. And we are finally paid off in this climactic and not to mention cinematic fight with the spider demon. Moreover, with the knowledge of his internal struggles and conflicts, he turns from a character that was initially annoying with no merit, cowardly at the simple thought of almost anything, into a character we want to root for. We want to see him win. Overall, Episode 17 lays the groundwork for a character that has more than what meets the eye, making him more than just comic relief, showing that he has the potential to be a powerful demon slayer in his own right. And, after this episode, there's really nothing of substance that develops this idea any further. Yes, there is the Moongen train arc and the Red Light District arc, and while he does fight, what I care more is the storytelling and the substance that is added to his character during it. And it's here when you start to see the cracks of his character start to show. But don't worry, we're not there yet, I'll get to it in a sec. For now, let's move on to his more popular and influential fights he's in. And just a heads up, I'm going to manga spoilers from here on out. I'll leave a timestamp for the next part. Wait, hold on. Spoiler warning, spoiler warning, spoiler warning, spoiler warning. Okay, were we all here? Okay, cool. His fight with Kaigaku is without a doubt one of the most popular ones in the series, with Zenitsu showcasing abilities and feats not shown before it. Again, uh, again? What the fuck? <laughs> again, Zenitsu often relied on his unconscious state to fight effectively, allowing him to tap into his true combat abilities without being hindered by his usual anxiety and self-doubt. However, Zenitsu faces Kaigaku caution consciously, cautiously. <gasps> Honestly, it's on character. Let me restart. However, Zenitsu faces Kaigaku consciously, distracted and somewhat blinded by rage. Not only does Zenitsu confront his former peer and essentially bully, but also his own fears and inadequacies. This whole battle is about more than just defeating an enemy. It's about Zenitsu proving to himself he has the ability to grow beyond his fears. The fact that he fights consciously, fully aware of the stakes and emotional weight of the battle, shows how much he has matured. He's no longer just this scared boy we saw earlier in the series. He has become someone who can face his own challenges head on. Moreover, his talk with Kuijima aids further in releasing Zenitsu from the shackles of his self-portrayed inadequacies. Here, Zenitsu apologizes to his teacher, blaming himself for his death, for not being the perfect disciple he wanted him to be. This is a reflection of the guilt and burden Zenitsu has carried throughout the series, believing that his cowardice and lack of self-confidence made him a disappointment. However, Kuajima isn't mad or upset, but simply proud. Proud of the kind person he grew up to be. He reassures Zenitsu that he has always been proud of him, not because of his achievements or his strength in battle, but because he's a kind person. His willingness to stand up despite his fears and his perseverance in the face of danger. Zenitsu's final talk with Kuajima serves as a vital capstone in his character arc. This moment allows Zenitsu's journey to come full circle, finally finding peace with himself and his place as a demon slayer. And we see this in his supportive role against Muzan. Yes, he's still scared throughout the fight and is still annoying as before, but change obviously doesn't happen overnight. Zenitsu is shown to be able to assist while still being awake. And to re-emphasize, you don't really have this kind of complexity with the other main characters, and I would argue even more than Tanjiro. 
To me, while Tanjiro is way less annoying and more mobile than him, take his quirky and positive traits away and you are left with a generic shonen main character, fighting for a solidified set of ideals he believes in and having a shallow understanding of what's right and wrong. And Inosuke is just there to fight regardless of his backstory. So now, with everything he's been through, all the hardships, struggles and development throughout the entire series, you think we could see a newer Zenitsu, one that is more confident in himself, one that is able to take that first step on his own. Pfft, nope. This is it. Nothing else happens. You know what's a hot name to moan? Chili Healer. You son of a b All this buildup of this character is essentially thrown out at the end of the series. Or in other words, it doesn't go anywhere else. From start to finish, Zenitsu's character was one built to show the development of a person struggling with low confidence and slowly understanding their own self-worth. But the audience is never shown this payoff afterwards, still being the same cowardly person we've known since the very beginning. Because of this, Zenitsu turned from being this character of great potential to one boiled down to a generic side character, with his most annoying traits being highlighted for comedic effect. The series almost makes fun of his low confidence, feeling like the last nail in the coffin for what could have been an amazing character. He changes from being a character that had the chance to be unique, to one that is simply annoying, not learning anything throughout his journey. Everything about him was wasted. And the worst part? He still could have been a great character. Again, all the pieces were there, but the series just doesn't do anything with it. In my opinion though, it's all down to where his final fight took place. Or rather, when it was in the story. After his final battle, his journey seems complete and ready to start a new one. Exploring this newfound self-reassurance. Perhaps if this interaction could have been some time before the Infinity Castle arc, we could have explored his character even more. For instance, let's take a look at the Swordsmith Village arc. During this arc, instead of simply expanding the character cast and changing the dynamic by simply switching them out with a couple of Hashira and Genya, they could have instead dove more into the interactions of Zenitsu and Inosuke, training, bonding, and eventually the climax, Zenitsu receiving that faded letter. Or in other words, a B-plot. A B-plot, or a B-story, is a secondary storyline that complements the main plot. Now, a B-story can serve several functions. It could develop secondary characters, hint hint, offer a contrast or a thematic counterpoint to the main plot, or provide comic relief from the primary narrative. Let's take a look at how Infinity War handles this. Where the film's narrative was split into three main storylines that work together to stop one single entity, Thanos. The A story follows the creation of Stormbreaker, the B story focuses on fighting Thanos on Titan, and the C story involves defending the siege on Wakanda and Demon Slayer could have taken a similar approach, or at the very least have any B-plot to advance the fight with Kaigaku earlier in the story. Here's a quick example, an imaginary one if you will. While Tanjiro is assigned to the swordsmithing village, we can give some time to follow Zenitsu and Inosuke on their next mission, or their recovery after the Red Light District. During this time, the two of them can have some very much needed bonding time, more development for each of their characters, and their entire journey ending on Zenitsu getting that letter. Of course, it doesn't have to be this nauseating back and forth. The story can simply go back in time after reaching a certain threshold of exposition and plot development to catch up the Inosuke and Zenitsu B-plot with the main story, where they then finally reunite. And honestly, it would be really fun to see their interactions after finally meeting again, seeing how each character changed, and how their new ideals interact with one another. Zenitsu would have matured more, Tanjiro would have undoubtedly been stronger and battle-hardened, and Inosuke, I don't know, could start fighting with his mask off. I'm just throwing darts at the wall here, it could be anything. But anyways, I'm sure you guys get the gist. Instead of being idle, essentially doing nothing, they could have been doing something more productive. Anything. What annoys me the most is that Demon Slayer is not unfamiliar with the idea of B-plots. In fact, it does it all the time, usually separating each character to fight their own individual battles until they eventually converge, like in the Red Light District, the Spider Forest arc, and even the episode where they all first met. And it would have been really awesome to see the series take that extra step. Usually most of the B-plots stretch to one arc, one fight, one interaction. 
But here, the show could have instead stretched this idea multiple arcs instead of confining it to one battle like it usually does. But obviously, as time has proven, the show doesn't go this route. Instead, essentially freezing the characters in time until the story decided it was time for them to come back. I know I shat on Zenitsu at the beginning of the video, but I hope I proved I don't actually hate him. Yes, he's annoying, yes, he's loud, and yes, his voice is unbearable to certain extents. But I can deal with that. But the potential of being a decently well-written character was there. Everything was there. And what does the show do? It makes fun of his low confidence. The series is aware of his self-deprecation, and instead of building further on it, decides to make him the butt of the joke. A character that had the ability to be one of the best in the show is boiled down to this. It leaves viewers with an incomplete picture. The show's decision to revert to comic relief rather than fully exploring his growth feels like a missed opportunity. Zenitsu could have been a symbol of personal growth and resilience. A character who teaches that inner strength can come from the most unexpected places. But, as it stands, his narrative remains unfulfilled, leaving a lingering sense of what could have been. A character of immense depth, whose true potential was never fully realized. The tragedy isn't in Zenitsu's fear or anxiety. It's the fact that these very traits, which could have been used to build an inspiring character arc, were instead undercut by the series' tendency to mock them. The result is a character who remains trapped in his initial role, with only glimpses of what could have been, leaving us wasted potential. But anyways guys, that's the end of the video. As per usual, I'll leave some clips of some audio. Enjoy. That is the hardest fucking line to say in this whole script. It's just my closer. But anyways guys, that's the end of the video. But anyways guys, that's the end of the- Fuck off. I gambled for the first time at Vegas, right? And it was just not fun. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should have just kept gambling and I would have won eventually, right? That's, that's the joke that goes around, right? 99% of gamblers quit before they win big. Yeah, that was me. Sorry, I don't got the balls like, um, like true gamblers do, okay? I'll admit to it. I submit. Do not disappoint me. Oh, don't worry. First my parents, you're next, pal, all right? <laughs> Let's fucking go. You ain't getting a cent from me. You ain't getting a cent from me. Famous last words, motherfucker. Famous last words. Famous last words right there.